and they sedate you and you go in the they go like I say you go go in and then they find out where to target so then after that you go into a, a radiation machine and they hook you up to another gadget onto the Gavin knife and you go in and it radiate the brain radiate it I got my first one done in 2014 because I had two brain tumors Wow one in the front one in the back I had both of those removed by surgery but this next one this this last time around I only had to do the Gavin knife where I just had to get them shrunk but those I had three first in, May, in March I had two which were about 2.5 centimeters one was like 1.2 centimeters I got that radiated got an MRI went back for my follow-up in May and they told me that I had another tumor which I just recently got radiated again I done the Gabba knife again so now I'm waiting to September to find out have that one dissolved Wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute, guys. I, I know you, you guys are listening to Keisha. We're here with, with, with Keisha right here in the heart of Detroit. We're, we're talking to her about her story. Um, she's, a mother of, she's a mother of four kids. Um, she's a native Detroiter, graduate from King. And just to hear her, hear her story talk about all the times when she had tumors in her brain I, oh, I also had to, not to cut you off. I also had to learn how to rewalk. <laughs> well, she, well, she's also saying she also had to learn to, to rewalk. So, real briefly, Keisha, mm -hmm. how did you even discover that you even had cancer? Oh, wow. Well, I was. It was around Christmas vacation, and my daughter had broke out from some deodorant, which deodorant is not good for us because they have aluminum in it. Wait, wait, wait. Say say that again. <laughs> wait, you guys heard that? You guys need to look at those ingredients or whatever's on the back of your deodorant. Say that again for them, please. Deodorant has a lot of aluminum in it, especially the degree. Degree is one of the most um, most um, common one that women said they use that have breast cancer. Um, I, my daughter had broke out from some deodorant and I touched on my arm. I don't know why. And I found the lump and two days later I found it in my breast. I had a um, um, mammogram for it and I did I done an ultrasound. When I did the ultrasound, the radiologist told me that I had had breast cancer, but they couldn't diagnose me just yet until I did my biopsy. When I did my biopsy, they found out that I had breast cancer. I went in and did, had the surgery April the 12th and they found out that I, from my chest wall to my arm, I had a mastectomy. From my chest wall to my arm, I had 22 of my lip notes was invaded with cancer. So when I went back wow. to the doctor after coming out the hospital for my follow up, I found out that I was stage 3 breast cancer. and year to the day of my surgery I went into the hospital because I hit my toe on my step and I couldn't move my toes and I went into the hospital and they did an MRI of of you know of of my whole body and they found out that I had two brain tumors in my head wait, wait wait okay mm -hmm. so so wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute did you guys catch that she said she she hit her toe listen to this y'all she said that she went inside back to the hospital because she hit her toe and you was concerned for your toe. My feet, my toe, I can feel the pain, but my, my toe, none of my toes would move. They wouldn't wiggle, like to get the pain, wiggle the pain away. My toes was just straight. And when I got to the hospital, I walked in, but by the time the doctor came, I, I was limping and they, did an MRI that morning and then the doctor came in and she had told me that I had two brain tumors in my head one in the front and one in the back the one in the front was growing to the left like so that was to the right that was affecting my right side and the one in the back was going to the left and it was affecting my left side they did the right surgery right then the right the top top of my head right then and there and I came back in June and got the other one. I was in the hospital for a month. I was in REM. 
I had to relearn how to walk and I was on a what uh, a brace for about three months I just was determined to not to be on the brace or the walker and I taught myself how to rewalk without the without having the heel I don't have heel toe motion so my foot was dropping okay so I taught myself how to balance it where I can walk again and I was they, they have put me on the preventive drug. I was still doing my Herceptin. That's what it, the preventive drug is called, Herceptin. I was on that for two years. They were giving me bone scans, MRI, regular checkup with me. And with the chemo that I was on, it was messing with my heart. It affected my heart and the Herceptin affects my heart as well. So when they didn't see any more cancer in my body, they took me off of it. So I was a survivor for two, I was all cancer free for two years and then last year of November I found out that it came back on my spine wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> are you guys catching this are you guys catching this um, she went to the hospital because she hurt her toe and she wasn't really feeling too good about that and then I just wonder if you didn't go to figure out about your toe how more it could have been more advanced in your brain because they they because they, the doctors wasn't even tracking anything out of your brain no actually my niece had i called her she's a nurse and she i told her that i couldn't move my toe and with knowing that my history she thought that, that my nervous system was shutting down and that's okay. that's how i end up going but no at that time they were only doing the scan the bone scan and it wasn't showing anything that you know that it, no cancer was anywhere so they yes they wasn't looking at the brain so so it, it started in your breasts mm -hmm. you said uh, 22 uh, 2013 in 2013 you how many lymph nodes you said that were 22. bad 22 22 uh, lymph nodes that were bad mm -hmm. and then you you stumped your toe you spoke to your 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 family member who's mm -hmm. a nurse and she said your nervous system may be a little bit then go to the hospital mm -hmm. and that's when they found out that I had two tumors in my brain two tumors in your brain yes and then there was some remission with that in a little while yep two years two, two, two ye years without anything I did the surgery I did the gamma knife um, they put me on a, med, uh, a chemo med to for it to penetrate my brain but it was affecting my heart as well so they had to take me off that so I just had to adjust the gabba knife and the removal of the two tumors and I was like I said I was free from for two years and last year in November of 2018 I had got a kidney stone okay and I went in and they did a CT on me and then that's when they found the tumor on my spine which had been small for two years and it wasn't even growing I knew that I had that spot on my on my spine but it wasn't it wasn't big enough for them to do a biopsy or anything on it so they told it told me that it was it had grew and I went back I went to see my doctor after the follow-up from the do uh, hospital and they did what is called a PET scan it's a scan it's kind of like an MRI it scans everything and then they have found out that I had um, in my neck, it was in my lift notes in my neck. They found that I had one in my chest. I got a, a, a tumor in my over, right over my kidney and the one in my spine. They did that. They started me on a chemo pill, which is called Zolota. I have been on that since December. And as, like I say, in March, of this year that's when they did an MRI on a follow-up MRI on me they just did the brain because the doctor said well we're gonna check your brain as well because it I had it metastasized to my brain before and when they did that thank God he did do that they found out that I had a 2.5 centimeter tumor in my brain and then then they get to, and then they found one, another one that was 1.5 centimeters. Wow. That was in my brain. So they did those, got those radiated. And then in May, I found out, uh, they called me in to come in to see the radiology and oncologist. And the nurse had told me that I was getting scheduled for another gabba knife. And I wasn't expecting 
for them to be saying, I was thinking that they was gonna say everything was fine, you know, the tumor had shrunk, but no, they was calling me in to set me up for another Gavin knife. And I went in that, on that Monday, that Thursday, I went in and got a Gavin knife to remove the other one. So now back, well, that was in May. So I had one in March, got a knife in March, and then I just had another one in May. Now, now I have to wait to September to make see if that one dissolves. So, so Keisha, so how many times have they had to go into your head or your brain to, to see about? Um, you go. I do a regular um, follow up, like every six months they were doing like a MRI on me. Just to check, just just doing it in a pet and a bone scan to make sure there's nothing hiding behind my bone. Like the one on my spine is behind the bone, it's in the bone. So they were checking that. And I for that, by me having that in my um, they check me, my brain, then they do a PET scan or they do a CT scan. Okay. So so I had to ask, you guys heard heard her talking and I and I, I, I said to her. I was like, wow, this is a lot. I've never heard mm -hmm. any story like this. And quite frankly, um, the doctors, she uh, she shared, like, when the doctors go in their meetings of all the cancer doctors, they are just completely amazed as to her surviving all of those, um, those procedures. I'm not sure what the success rate is on on the breast cancer or the brain well as far he, as they explained to me that they have they haven't my doctor and my nurse dr simon he's awesome at, <laughs> dr simon at, you're at, a good man at carmados and i have an awesome nurse her name is maria gert they both informed me that they never they have never had a patient who had been off herceptin for two years and survived without any preventive drugs or anything. So that's awesome to hear. So I just keep fighting, you know, every, you know, making sure I take my meds. I'm back on, I'm off of my preventive drug right now because Herceptin affects my heart and it dropped my, my heart function is low right now. So I'm just on the chemo pill and they trying to figure out, am I going to go back on the Herceptin or if they're going to do another, try another source of, of um, form of chemo to help me along the way. Okay. So I, I, asked, I asked Keisha here, I just asked her straight up. I was like, do you blame God? I mean, because if, if I would go in, I, I, had a, I had a cystoscopy done um, probably about three years ago. And they had to see about my bladder and my prostate. It's a little bit large for my age. Mm -hmm. And they had to put me to sleep. And let me tell you, I thought that was like major, <laughs> major. To me, that was a big deal. And just to hear you you, you speak on all what's been going on since uh, 2012 or 13? 13. 2012, but I got diagnosed as having it in march the 3rd of 2013 i'm a six-year survivor of it she's a six-year survivor i got friends who are survivors and i you know who you are i'm not gonna call your names out but i tell you it is a big deal to get those anniversary years of your surviving this cancer so so straight up i mean i mean why do you think this has been dealt your way i mean i mean it's it's i don't know man you some people may think Oh, Keisha, you you did bad in your life, or you did that, or you're an evil person, or X, Y, and Z. Um, what do you think it is? I mean, what's what's the purpose, or what do you see um, the reason behind all I of this? I think it's a lot to do, do with our food. It's a lot of chemicals in our food. Um, I don't I don't blame no like he said God. I don't blame no one for what I had. It's just something that happened to me. Unfortunately, it happened to me. I mean, but Keisha, you, <laughs> you just told me at least about how many procedures did you, uh, how many cancers did they find and how many times they had to go in to see about your health in those last six years? Well, I had two, two surgeries to my brain. I had 
I was gonna get reconstruction surgery, I ended up getting an infection in my tissue in my um tissue expander. And if anyone women out here listening to me, if you have a tissue expander in you, make sure you let them know because I found out that they are not compatible to the MRIs and I got an infection in my chest from it and I wasn't able to do the reconstruction surgery. Um so make sure make sure you you know let them know if you have that. And I had, I, I had the two brain, two breast surgeries, tissue expander surgery, and like I said, I had to sit down for a second and learn how to walk. Wow, that's that's at least five, y'all. <laughs> and 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 I tell you that her energy and her outlook on life is one of the best outlooks that I have ever seen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I. <laughs> I try. <laughs> <laughs> she says she she tries. Can we start walking this way? Let, let's so you go go this way. Um, when when I when I um. When when she came into my car. Um. Her her spirit was 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 so amazing. I don't even remember what what I said. I must have said something like <laughs> witty or something like, "How you doing today? A good day to be alive." Oh yeah, I say any day. Any day above ground is a good day. She said, any day <laughs> above ground. I remember you saying that now. And then I, and the minute she said that, I was like, oh, man, she understands what this thing is about life and how we need to live in the moment and live in gratitude um, for life. So, you know, I do these things, um, Keisha, where I ask, uh, where I meet people. I have the shirts that says, I am glad. And uh, I asked people what are four things that they are glad for. And, um, and I normally tell them you got four seconds. You got four seconds to say 10. You got 10 seconds to say four things that you're glad for. Oh. If we could turn this way so you guys could see this beautiful, beautiful river. I, I, you guys are going to see the Canada side. Um, so I, I'm going to ask you what are four things that you are glad for? Um, my children my family, life, and the fourth thing, life again. <laughs> life again. Let's turn this way. I think we have a better, better son on this way. So, so she's obviously glad and thankful for what God has, God has done for her. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and I, and I would say this guys, it's, it's so easy to get down and depressed and to do the blame victim game. Yeah. Now she does say certain days she gets down, but it, it's just it's just down because of the pain. It's not down because of God. Woe is me, and that and that just floors me yeah. that she made the decision to say, "This is my card. I am going to deal with it the best way I know how." Oh, absolutely. So, is there anything in closing? Is there anything which you could say to women? As far as with getting themselves checked, I mean, because at the time you wasn't even scheduled to even do I wasn't the... even of age. Most women get a mammogram by the time they're 40. I was 37 years old when I got my mammogram. And one thing I always tell ladies when that I talk to, I never looked at cancer as my death sentence. I don't, I don't get scared of the word C, cancer. I, I I recommend that you ladies are you of, of age where you need to get a mammogram get checked um wash your wash what you're eating um we gotta get better with our health um I got I don't eat pork I try to sometimes don't eat as much meat and just check yourself you know do your self self examinations on your breasts as well. I mean, and if you find something, go get it checked out because most of the time when women find something, all the time it's not cancer. It could be a cyst. It could just be a, um, I had some in my breast that were crystallized once they stuck the needle in there and it wasn't, it wasn't cancer. So go get it checked out. It could be, it could be any form of thing. Don't be scared to get yourself checked out. And like I say, don't think that this is a death sentence. If you do what you're supposed to do, eat right, do what the doctor, I mean, some people tell me they didn't want to do chemo, but it saved my life. I'm still here six years being able to tell y'all my story. Yes. And I appreciate Franz for wanting me to tell my story and get it out there because 
as women, you know, we need to take care of ourselves. We always taking care of everyone else and think about everyone else and then we put our own health on the back on the back burner and then it'd be too late. So we have to put self preservation. We have to think about ourselves first and what we're going through. Cause because if we're not taking care of ourselves, then how are we gonna take care of our loved ones? Yes. My my goal when I first went through this was all I was thinking about is who's gonna be there for my children if I leave. But now I think about them, but now I think about myself too. Now I have to live for me and them. So if I don't live for, for myself, then how can I live for them? So make sure you go out and get your mammograms. Uh, and if you have a, alternative medicine, it's good too. Whichever way you feel, but make sure if you find something, please, please go get it checked out. Don't wait too long and then it starts spreading. You don't want to be your own doctor and not get yourself looked at because you, you know, you don't, you scared of what cancer, the word cancer. I'm a, I'm a living witness that six years and everything that I've been through, I'm still here. So there you go, guys and ladies. She said that age 37, she felt something from some deodorant that her daughter was using and she said degree i don't know about those ingredients in degree but i promise you keisha that i will look at the ingredients on degree oh it got aluminum in it for sure she says for sure and i'm gonna take her on her word so really one of the deodorants that i know that i'm having is tom's or you can go to a like whole food they have um organic um deodorant that doesn't have aluminum in it that's safe for you to tell and the old school remedy of my aunt when they were young old you know younger baking soda you know it's other ways um it's other look up some stuff there are alternatives to doing using deodorant and see what you can use all right so i'm hearing people that look for different alternatives with what we put under our skin for deodorant mm -hmm. make sure we're eating cleaner yeah that's a must that's a must <laughs> that's a must and, and just get off the pork <laughs> uh, she says get off y'all get off that pork y'all heard keisha get off that pork and, and and keisha i just want to say thank you for for spending the time out here with me right now um in downtown detroit and um if this only reaches one person and if that person is you <laughs> you need to say thank you for God for ordaining this meeting so that you could hear this message of getting yourself checked out. There's nothing to be afraid of. The, the, no. the, biggest, the biggest error in all of this is for you to hear this and you feel something and you don't get it checked. That's right. She's living witness, guys, that you can have all of this happen to you and you can still thrive. Yes. Yeah giving all honor and praise to God for healing my friend here. And you never know the people that you meet. I was just picking her up on a ride, just taking her home. And her energy was absolutely phenomenal. And I, was, and I said to her, I was like, there is no way I could have ever guessed that you've been through all of that by your current energy that you're spitting out and thankfulness and gratitude. Yeah. So with that being said, unless Keisha got anything else to say. <laughs> no. <laughs> what she would say get yourself checked yes, right please ladies please that's all i ask my sisters please get checked please that's a must we have we have to get better on our health and get the awareness out here that's one reason why i did want to get my story out because my outside don't look like my inside <laughs> so all right I wish you all the best Y'all heard it here live, her story. She is on Facebook. If you guys want to connect with her and you guys see this, certainly you can connect with her or you can connect with me because this story of God's blessings through the circumstances of life, it lets me know it's like you can do everything right, but it's in the air, it's in the environment, it's in the food. Mm -hmm. So if you got life, if you got those legs working, you could walk. She said she had to relearn walking, y'all. RIM is a rehab, one of the best rehab hospitals here in downtown Detroit. She had to relearn how to walk because of the brain tumors, y'all. I talk about this all the time as far as about being able to walk and being thankful for everything. How about that, y'all? You could walk, you could think, 
if you feel it, you concern, get it checked out. It's your boy Franz, Mr. Boo Mentor, and this is live with me, with Keisha, at the Winter Circle, downtown Detroit. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye for now.